One, two, three. It's Eden Village Homestead, because we're home instead. <laughs> Hey camp friends, I'm Lynn, a lifeguard slash poi enthusiast, and this is an Eden Village Homestead video where we're home instead, but still trying to find ways to connect to the land and each other. This video, I'm going to show you how to spin some poi moves, because poi is an amazing outlet for creativity, self-expression, and to get you up and moving. Before we get started, I want to make sure everyone knows that some of these tricks can take a lot of time and practice. But don't get discouraged. If you practice enough, you'll definitely get these down. I'm going to start by showing you two of the fundamentals of poise spinning, those being two-weave and three-weave. So how do we spin two-weave? We're going to start with our dominant hand spinning our poi forward. We want to make sure that when we're spinning it right next to us, we want to keep our poi parallel to our body. If we find that the poi is tilting a little bit, you can go up against a wall or something flat to try and really make sure that you're spinning your poi parallel to your body. Once you have this spinning parallel, you're going to make an X in front of you traced out by an infinity sign with your poi head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to cross down, go back up, and then cross down to where I'm starting. So from here I'm going to go up, cross down, and then cross back to where I started. You want to make sure that you're really crossing in front of you in the center and that you're keeping your poi parallel on both sides. Once you're able to do this without hitting yourself, you want to make sure that you can also do the same motion with your non-dominant hand. Again, making sure that you keep your hands parallel and your poi parallel to your body. You're crossing it in the center of your body. And you can do this a lot of times. Once you have this down with both of your hands, we're going to put them together into two weave. So how do we put this into two weave? When we're spinning two weave, we're going to have one hand that crosses over the other, and then you're going to be open. So you cross your arms, and your arms are going to be open. How we're going to start is I'm going to want to cross over with my dominant hand on top and my non-dominant hand on the bottom. I'm going to initiate this by taking my non-dominant hand, my left hand, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to start my cross that we were doing. And then once my hand is in the center of my body, I'm going to take my dominant hand. It's going to go up, hit my non-dominant down, and it's going to swing back to where we started. So non-dominant comes across, dominant comes over, hits my hand down, and it comes back to where we started. So with our poi, start with my left hand, take my right hand and hit my left hand back. Again. And you want to get this so you can really do this consecutively and cleanly. Once you get this motion down with your dominant hand on top, we're going to switch. So we have our non-dominant hand on top. And we're going to start the same way, right? We're going to initiate with our dominant hand this time if we want our left hand to be on top. I'm going to initiate with the hand that's on bottom. And as it's coming down to cross, I'm taking my left hand I'm coming over, hitting my right hand down, and it comes back around. So I'm going to start with my right hand initiating. It comes down, left hand goes, and hits it back. Again, hits my arm back. And once you can get this down a lot of times, then you can do two weave pretty well. And we're going to build off of that into three weave. We do that by taking this moment that our arms are open in two weave, and we're going to switch to our other two weaves. So right now I have my left hand on top. I'm going to take this moment with my arms are open. I'm going to pause for a little bit. And I'm going to initiate with my left hand so my right hand will be crossing on top. And then you can take this moment again. And then you're going to switch back to having your other hand on top. And then this is really what three weave is. is you're just switching back and forth between which hand is on top when you're doing two weave taking a little pause in between to switch. And once you can do this very well, you can start to take less time when your arms are open to really switch over right then. So my arm is coming and then I just switch right over. The first move I'm gonna show you is called a windmill. This is where you're facing towards the audience, but your poi are rotating around your head. 
So to do this move, we're going to build this up with steps. I'm going to start by facing towards one direction. It doesn't matter which side. I'm facing towards my left. What I'm going to do is, as I'm facing left, I'm going to turn 180 degrees towards my audience to face the other direction. And then I'm just going to do it again, rotate towards my audience, and now I'm back to where I started. So we're going to use this movement when we're spinning our poi. Facing our first direction, we're going to spin forward with our poi near our head level, around our hands near our ears. And what we're going to do is, as your hand closest to the audience, in this case my right arm, is on its way down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn those 180 degrees. So my right arm is on its way down, and I turn. Now I'm facing the other direction, and my poi are spinning in reverse this time. So again, my hand closest to the audience this time is now my left hand. As it's on its way up, I'm going to do that turn 180 degrees. So my left arm on its way up, and I turn. So to build this movement into windmill, we're going to do it by counting by threes to start. So every three rotations my poi makes, I'm going to turn 180 degrees. So starting with my right hand, one, two, three, and I turn. Now with my left hand, one, two, three, and I turn. Once you get comfy doing it with three, go down to two. So my right hand, one, two, one, two. And then you can go down to one, 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 until you're able to just face forwards with your hands doing the circling motion around your head. And now you can do windmill. Amazing! If you want to get a little more fancy this time, is I started facing my left. Now face to your right and start over. So you can do windmill in both ways, both directions. The next set of moves I'm going to teach you are stalls. Stalls are amazing transition tools that you can use to go between the direction which your poi are spinning or change the tricks that you are going between. My favorite way of visualizing a stall is to imagine a circle as being traced out by the head of your poi centered at your hand. Now I'm going to inscribe this circle in a square. To perform a stall, what's going to happen is my poi head is going to hit one of the corners of the square. So how do I do this? If I have two lines of axes going through the center of the circle, what's going to happen is as my poi head is crossing one of these lines, I'm going to drag my hand across that line to let my poi head drop to the corner of the square. So if I'm going for this bottom left corner right here, as my poi head crosses this line, I'm going to drag my hand out. So drop it, and my hand goes across the line, and my poi head stops. You can do this on any corner. So if I'm trying to go for my bottom right, again, as it's crossing this line, I'm going to drag my hands across the line, and my poi head will drop. If you find that your poi is not quite stopping when you're trying to stall, you can drop your hand down and lower it so you lose momentum in the poi. And you can do this with any of the four corners. So you can have down stalls, up stalls, bottom stalls, and top stalls. Now it's important that you make sure that you can do this with both hands, right? Make sure you can do it with your left and your right hand. And once you get that, then you can start to do them at the same time. Or do them in opposite times, right? I mentioned that stalls are great transition tools, but how do we actually do some of those transitions? Well, you can actually use stalls to transition in very creative ways depending on what move you want to go between and what directions your poi are spinning. One of the first stalls that I learned to transition with was going between three weave and transitioning into butterfly. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to start by looking at what our three weave is. When we're spinning three weave, we're always having one hand crossing over the other, left over right, right over left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dominant hand, my right hand, and as it's on top, going towards the bottom, rather than letting it switch underneath, I'm going to take it out and stall. So I've got left over right, right over left, and I stall, and I keep my left hand spinning. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag my right hand that's stalled 
up and drag it into the pattern in the other direction. And look at that, now I'm in butterfly. So now we're in butterfly, but how do we get back into three weave? Well, it's kind of going to be similar. What we're going to do is just look at what our butterfly is. When I'm spinning butterfly, my right hand is spinning counterclockwise. What I want to do to transition back into three weave is stall up this time. So I'm going to stall to my top right corner of my square. So I stall up and I drag it back into three weave, keeping my left hand spinning the whole time, right? So I'm going to take my right hand, I'm going to stall up, other hand still spinning, and I drag it down into three weave. And there you go. Now you can transition between three weave and butterfly. The last move I'm going to show you is a flower. Flowers are some amazing shapes that are created out of beautiful mathematical functions. This one is one of my favorites. It is a same time opposite direction flower. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to start off by just using our arms. I'm going to have my arms wide out and I'm going to face towards my dominant hand, which is my right hand. Both of my arms are going to be meeting at the top and the bottom when they're turning. So they're both going to be turning in circles. So I'm going to go meet them down first, and then they're going to go out, and then they're going to meet at the top again. So they're out, down, out, and up. Notice how my body is kind of changing direction. I want to make sure that when my arms are reaching out, that my body is open. I don't want to be reaching underneath myself or behind like this. So I keep my body forward, out, down. I turn to face the other direction, keeping my body open, and then up. And we're gonna keep this motion throughout. So with our poi, I'm gonna start with the hand that is behind me when I'm facing towards my right, which is my left hand. And I'm gonna spin it in the clockwise direction. What's gonna happen is I'm going to stall my left hand down in the middle of my body and I'm going to drag it out forward. And it's still going to be spinning in the clockwise direction. And now I'm going to go back. So I'm going to go up, stall up, and then go out. Make sure that when you're doing this, you're really exaggerating, going all the way down, all the way up, keeping your arm extended. Out, up, back, down, out, up, back. And you're going to do the same thing, similar, with your right arm. Your right arm, when it's in back, I'm going to turn just to show you. When your right arm is in back, it's going to be spinning in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to again go down first. So down, stall it, making sure that I keep it, my arm all the way extended, and I go forward, and it's still going to be spinning in the counterclockwise direction. And now I'm going to go up and back, making sure I extend my arm all the way up and back. So down, out, up, and back. And that's what this is going to be. So your both arms are out, down, forward, and back. Down, out, up, out, down. So how do we actually put your two arms together? The motion is kind of similar to doing a butterfly. When we perform a butterfly, we have our hands very close to each other. So we're going to for this, split our arms out as far as we can reach. I'm going to face towards my dominant hand. I'm going to take my dominant hand, rather than spinning it in front of my face like this, I'm going to move it to spin behind me in the same time. And so now we're going to do that arm movement that we were practicing earlier. And we're going to bring both of our arms down. And then they're going to get dragged out forward. And we're going to pop them up and back out to where we started. And we're going to continue this, going down, out, up, and back out. If we put some of these moves together, we actually can create a mini routine. We're going to start off with three weave. We're going to stall and transition into butterfly. From butterfly, we can extend our arms out to do the flower. And from our flower, we can go back into butterfly, transition back into three weave. 
fire is used throughout Judaism. On Havdalah, separate candles will be united as one, connecting them together. This fire from the poi we practice can be a symbol for the strength we each have within ourselves, allowing us to stay strong and connected with each other despite having to be separate for the summer. Thanks everyone for joining me today with an Eden Village Homestead video for poi spinning. I'll see you next time.